Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad. India's vaccination drive has picked up pace to curb a likely third wave of the COVID pandemic. But a new mutant version of the virus, the Delta Plus variant, has emerged as a fresh cause of concern, with cases being detected in parts of Maharashtra, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh. Now, Maharashtra has even reported its first death due to the Delta Plus variant. I have with me today eminent virologist and vaccine expert, Dr. Gagandeep Kang, to get insights into this latest avatar of COVID, the dangers it poses, and what are the ways that we can possibly counter it. Uh, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you for having me here. Glad to have you here, ma'am. According to the Health Ministry, the Delta Plus variant is now detected in 48 samples across 10 states. Now, given the data that is available so far on the Delta Plus variant, what is it that concerns you as scientists like you the most? I actually don't know whether I should be concerned at this stage or not. And the reason for that is that we have very little information except the absolute numbers and quite frankly at this stage i don't have anything that i view as being an exceptional concern beyond the fact that this is part of the delta variant family now if we need to know whether we want to worry more about the delta plus variant going beyond the worry that we already have with the Delta variant, we need to have more information. The information that is concerning us, as far as I can see, is based just on sequence information. The fact that the Delta plus variant is the Delta plus has one other mutation that has previously been seen in the beta variant. And that is a variant that we know has an ability to escape immune responses that are induced by vaccines. Not a complete escape, but at least partially better escape vaccines than let's say the alpha variant. So the concern is that we will have all of the bad things about the Delta variant, which is an increased ability to spread along with an ability to better escape the immune response. This is all based only on sequence data. And what we really need to know if we really want to worry is one, is this strain spreading faster than the parent Delta variant? Previously, we have seen in data from the UK, we have seen that the Delta variant was able to outcompete the Alpha variant. Mm. Now, are we in a situation where Delta Plus is outcompeting Delta without having a sense of how many people have tested positive? Among them, how many samples were sequenced? Among them, how many were Delta, how many were Delta Plus, and how many were something else? Without that information, repeated over time, it is impossible for us to say that this Delta Plus variant is truly spreading faster than Delta. Then the other thing we need to know is, is it really escaping vaccines? So in how many of the individuals that we have seen with the Delta Plus variant were people vaccinated with one dose, with two doses, how far back? And what were the clinical outcomes in these people infected with this strain? Now, from what I've heard from India, among the people that have been infected with this strain, we've heard of two deaths but we've heard of many more recoveries. So what does this mean? I think until we have a lot more information, it's very difficult for us to say. All right, so you're saying basically that we cannot for now positively say that the Delta plus variant uh, is more virulent than the Delta variant because of lack of uh, enough data. Moving on to another topic, and that is about, you spoke about uh, the potential 
of the Delta Plus variant to evade vaccines. Um, and, you know, and we not, you said that data doesn't right now give us any evidence to or contrary to this or even pro this. Is it always necessary then that as a virus mutates, as it gets more virulent, more dangerous, uh, it has more capacity to escape the virus? I'm just asking no. from a common sensical point of view. Yeah. So there, with any variant, most of the mutations that we see have no functional consequences. They are like spelling errors, but okay. it doesn't change the meaning of the virus. You know, an example is um, you spell pediatric with A-E. If you use the UK spelling, you spell it without the A if you use the US yeah. spelling. The meaning hasn't changed. Many mutations, that's what happens. The meaning, the function of the virus does not change. In some situations, it does change. And there are five ways in which a mutation can have functional consequences. The first is there is a mutation at a site that is used for diagnosing that the virus is there and that site changes. So now we have an inability to detect the virus by the tests that we are using. This mm -hmm. is particularly true for PCR, but so far, because we use three different places usually for the PCR test, then you know, even in the case of the alpha variant where one site was lost, the other two still work. So we have not so far had an issue where the ability to detect the virus has been a problem. The second is, does the virus become more transmissible? We've seen this with the alpha variant. We've seen this by the, with the delta variant. Essentially, what has happened is the mutation has allowed the spike protein of the virus to bind better to the ACE2 receptor. So what was a loose, floppy arrangement joining up of the two that would result occasionally in the ability of the virus to infect the cell has now become a stronger binding. So the ability of the virus to infect a cell has gotten higher. So transmission, we have seen examples where mutations have led to increased transmission. The next question is, does this make the virus cause more severe disease. And so far, the only hints of this that we have seen is potentially with the Delta variant. And there again, the data, even five months after we started to see the Delta variant, the data are still quite choppy. Some places are saying there's no difference in the clinical picture. Others are saying more patients are winding up in the ICUs. Uh, we know that replication is happening at a higher level. We think that progression might be somewhere, you know, a little bit faster with the Delta variant. But it has not categorically been stated that the Delta variant is always 20%, 30%, you know, 5% more severe disease than with any of the other variants. We don't have that comparison, but at least it's out there. The next is, will treatments work against this virus? Now, fortunately for us, we have very limited actual antivirals, but even where we have had monoclonal antibodies used for treatment, we know that the monoclonal antibodies that are produced by Eli Lilly do not work against some of the new variants. The Regeneron monoclonals still continue to work, but the Eli Lilly monoclonals are not working. So that's an issue where variants have been of concern. And the last is, will vaccines work or not? So far, what we have seen is that if we take the ancestral Wuhan version of the virus, then the best response, best protection that vaccines afford is against that. But it's still pretty good against the alpha variant and the delta variant. With the beta and gamma variants, 
some of the vaccines have performed less well against those variants and we know from the lab that we produce lower antibodies a lower the antibodies we make have less ability to neutralize these agents but mm. fortunately for us the amount of neutralizing antibodies that we make is so much that even if we lose 20 30% of the ability of, to neutralize it's still pretty good so vaccines are continuing to work against all of the variants that we have less well against some variants but there is no evidence to show that any of the vaccines are not working at all against a particular variant so whether it's one dose that you need or one or two doses you need for various variants we know the vaccines are protected so five conditions where we worry about variants transmissibility definitely we have seen it reduced activity of vaccines and drugs we've seen to some extent severity of disease we don't really know because we still need more data for diagnostics yes we lost one site in pcr but still all the diagnostic tests we have are continuing to work all right that's 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 a very comprehensive assessment thank you ma'am uh, does the you know to take your point forward uh, in madhya pradesh for instance uh, of the seven people who been diagnosed with the delta plus variant one is a toddler uh, could that be an indication i'm i'm sure you'll say that there's not sufficient data but that could that be an indication that the delta plus could actually perhaps attack uh, younger children more uh, is that something that is that a takeaway we can go with so aditi you are reading my mind now or you are becoming a scientist because until we have proof we won't say with yeah. such certainty as many people are saying you know the third wave children will be more affected etc our reaction is we need really more data to be able to predict better i think one of the things that people don't realize is that the rates of infection for all of the variants that we have seen so far have been similar for children and adults you know it was true for the ancestral variant alpha beta gamma delta it's all been the same why do we expect delta plus to be any different right one toddler is infected how many people did we screen how many people do we know had delta how many people do we know had delta plus are the distributions of infection any different across age groups we don't have that data now if we think from a biology perspective why do you think children would be more likely to be infected with a virus rather than adults it can happen because children are born immunologically naive they've never seen the virus before adults have seen that virus many times so if the virus comes around again a child is more susceptible than an adult that's the way most viral infections work that's why children get infected more often than adults do right you know when you send kids to school they'll always come back with a fever cough cold etc that is for commonly circulating viruses when this virus becomes something that is circulating the whole world's population has had experience of this virus then that situation may arise but at the moment we are not in that situation the second reason might be that children may have a receptor for the virus that is different for the receptor that is available in adults that actually does happen but it happens only in the neonatal period for the first 4 weeks of life after that in our mucosal surfaces we become more and more adult like we lose mm. those pro- uh, proteins and sugars that are expressed on the surface so there's no reason to think that toddlers or children will be more infected 
by a virus than adults do. 